Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we have Memoirs as Ernie's next lead code question. It depends on a really important functional programming concept known as memoization. So I'll explain memoization in a minute or two and then we can come back to the question later. So memoization is a technique of saving computations where you know that if you are given certain inputs, you will be returning the same output again and again. So why would you do uh, the same computation again and again? It's just you will compute it and save it with some references. By references, I mean, uh, let's take a really simple example. So consider you are a shopkeeper, right? And uh, you will be having a huge sale in your uh, shop. And there are a lot of customers, right? Um, now imagine, every time a customer buys an item, you have to calculate the total cost, including taxes and everything. For example, if a customer buys a shirt that costs around $10, the tax rate is 10%, you have to calculate the total cost as 11%, right? 10% of 10 is 1 so the total cost will come as 11 now there is a huge line right so what you will do uh, whenever the next customer comes you will also calculate uh, the same and you have to do it multiple times right so instead what you will do that you will try to remember that uh, if I get a 10% of 10 per uh, of 10 dollar it will be 11 right you sort of memorize it you sort of remember things right so next time whenever same customer comes with same values you will just remember okay last time it was 11 so this time i'll just directly use it i don't have to calculate it same thing goes in programming as well uh, just give me so i'll uh, just take an um, example of this fibonacci program right uh, this is a popular problem but uh, let's try to see how memories can help this improve so to calculate a Fibonacci of a number, we need the value of previous two numbers. Like for calculating Fib5, we need value of Fib4 and Fib3. Similarly, for calculating the value of Fib4, we need Fib3 and Fib2. And for calculating Fib3, we need Fib2 and Fib1. So you'll notice that we are doing some sort of repeated uh, computation here again and again. So for, cal for calculating Fib3, we need this tree here. 3 will calculate 2 and 1. 2 will need 1 and 0, right? And uh, this is how the same tree works in another branch, right? So you will see that we are doing some sort of repeated computation, right? What we will do, we will try to calculate fit 3's value first time and store it somewhere uh, in some sort of variable. So whenever I'm getting next time, like uh, I have to calculate fit 3, I will just look at that variable and see if I've already calculated. If I've already calculated, I already know the answer and I do not have to do all of this competition again and again. It might look really simple to you at this point, but consider if it's FIP 500 or FIP 5000. In that case, you will be calculating this FIP 3 or maybe FIP 300 n number of times, right? So this is how you can save your computations. Okay, now coming back to question. So we are given a function fn we have to return a memoirs version of that function so this is again coming as a higher order function which we have learned in our previous videos right okay a memoirs function is a function called that will never be called twice that is what we have just seen um, with the same inputs so as i told before it totally depends on input if your inputs are changing we have to calculate again but if you are getting same it, sh it doesn't uh, make sense to calculate again and again we will just see if we have a if we have stored that response before and just directly use it okay this is what it's saying you can assume there are three possible input functions so this is just an assumption it could be anything uh, some fib and factorial so this is just an example it doesn't really matter uh, this is what we have seen as, as an example for calculating fib n we need fib n minus 1 and fib n minus 2 so for calculating fib 3 you need fib uh, yeah fib fib 2 and fib 1 so in the same way right okay coming back to the signature i'll explain the signature first and then we can jump into the coding uh, yeah so here we have this memoirs function we have to make it as a higher order function so this is how it will be used you will be getting a function inside this this is some sort of uh, call counter i'll give you a dry run in the last but uh, we'll come jump to the solution now uh, i have it ready here if you'll wait i'll exp i'll help you sh understand that concept as well okay so you will see that we are calling this memoirs function this memoirs function right <coughs> with an input of 2 comma 3 so does that make uh, this the first time unique yes we haven't seen 2 comma 3 before so it will go inside this whole function and calculate it and return as 5 but next time whenever 2 comma 3 is coming we'll just see okay we have done it in past the value will always gonna be 5 
and hence we can just direct, directly return it from our local storage if it's 2 comma 4 then we will see okay we haven't calculated 2 comma 4 before so we have to calculate it and it will be <coughs> 6 this time so this is how the memorization concept works in java uh, in any programming language and it can help you improve your code uh, sorry uh, yeah improve your code um, so let's see how it works and how we can implement it so we will start by declaring a local variable uh, cache so if you already know caching is a mechanism where uh, you try to store values and see if it exists so some sort of equivalent to memorization so we will just call it cache so this is a key uh, this is an object right so an object has key and a value so for a given key it will always return a value this is how object works in javascript now we will see <coughs> what we are doing so this function right i'll explain you the arguments sorry i just missed explaining them so this memo is right this function it will be present here as an fn so whatever this function is this will be present here right and the arguments you are passing inside this function a comma b which is eventually 2 comma 3 or whatever you are passing in this memoize function it could be 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 comma 7 this will be present in this ARGS with this three dots so this three dots ARGS will be an array of all of these inputs I hope this is clear so what we are going to do now we are going to make a unique key with the help of these arguments so basically if i am getting 2 comma 3 i have to make some unique key so that um, whenever i store this value inside my cache uh, cache object i can see the result of it so if it's 2 comma 3 what we will do here on this line number 7 we will try to uh, we will try to make a unique key by this join function so this join function is an array function which will uh, combine all of these uh, all of this array items and separate them with this uh, string whatever we are passing it could be anything it could be dot slash or anything for now we are taking hash so it will eventually become 2 hash 3 if it was 2 comma 3 comma 4 it would have become 2 hash 3 hash 4 hash some sort of that value and then we are just uh, type casting it to string just to make sure it's not creating any problem it's not really needed at this point but we will do that uh, just to make our code better so now we have a cache key of 2 comma 3 here we will see if this cache key exists in our cache or not so this is how you can uh, this is how you can basically um, see in javascript if an uh, oh sorry this is how you can access a object's value in javascript so this is cache here this is the same object then whatever cache key we have generated we will see if this cache key exists in this cache if it exists we will get the value if it doesn't it will return as undefined so in javascript default is undefined so if you do not have anything it will be undefined so this is what we are going to check do we have that value in our code or not so if it's the if it's there if the value is there we will simply return the cached value or it yeah you can re simply return the cache value you don't have to write any of this right if it's not there if it's not there it will not go inside this if loop it will just directly come here and it will call this function whatever we have passed in this particular case this will be the function here and pass all the arguments whatever we have got inside the same function so this will be a comma b here when this function is done it will return us some value in this particular case 2 comma 3 will return 5 so we will store the value of 5 in cache cache key so that is 2 hash 3 will now have value of 5 so whenever next time we are coming with 2 comma 3 it will directly come inside this if condition it will be if it will not be undefined so it will come here and simply return 2 comma uh, it will simply return 5 it will not have to calculate the function again and again it will simply return from from line number 11 it will not come to line number 14 i hope i made things clear uh, if you have any doubts you can put them in the comment or just jump into my discord channel and tag me there i can help you with that okay i hope this is clear you can just simply click on run and try to see if it's getting compiled yes it is and i just uh, wrote a value here right i'll just give me a second you can just directly use this cache value as well yes 
also i wanted to mention one more thing yeah you do not need really uh, this uh, this template caters at this point but i just wanted to show if you want to convert if if, if you wanted to convert something into uh, some string or some combination you can use that for now since we are not doing that you can just directly use uh, cache key as well it should also work okay after submitting it we will get that part right now this whole thing will be available in the description the whole code will be available i'll just paste it and explain it better with the comments you can just click on the link and see in the uh, solutions as well um, i hope this is clear now i'll give you a walk through how it works right okay so this was just give me a second i'll add a console dot clear okay so this is uh, this is how the function looks like right we have an add function here so this add is basically giving us the added value for here we also have a uh, call counter so whenever this function is getting called we will just co use this call counter here right to increment it so we will call this add and see the value of count initially it was zero so this is this will be called the call counter will be increased so the call counter increased and uh, whenever the console is ha console log is happening it's coming as one so this is called once right same whenever you are going again 2 comma 2 right this 2 comma 2 will be coming here it will return it will return 4 but it will also increment the value of call counter so now the call counter is 2 so this means the function was called twice similarly again 2 comma 2 will come and this will return 4 uh, but the call counter will be increased and it will return 3 so you see the whole function was the whole function was called thrice right this is something uh, really which we really want to avoid for the same input we can try to avoid this right now we will see how a memoize function can help us better so this is the same function which we have written here i have just minimized it for better readability now you will see that the whole thing uh, is just identical we what we have wrapped the same function add here inside our memo is whatever we have whatever we have seen in the previous example here right so this is our new function we will be passing 2 comma to the new function it will return 4 and increment the counter because it's for the first time first time it will be calculating it right so the call counter is 1 now the return type is 2 uh, sorry it will return us 4 right and the, hence the call counter was increased to 1 next time it will see that it's 2 comma 2 which we have already calculated and store in our cache that is 2 hash 2 it will store there and uh, it already knows that whenever 2 hash 2 comes the answer is 4 so it will just return it from there you will see that the call counter is still 1 that is it haven't called uh, it haven't called the function it is just using the cached value similarly for the third time also and hence you can see there are three console logs but the value is still 1 yeah that is how memorization works in any programming language i hope this made things clear if you uh, like the explanation please uh, hit the like button and click on subscribe thank you